Good evening all and welcome to the weekend and welcome to yet another instalment of Knockout Football for Chelsea Football Club. The Blues have been on the trophy trail just about everywhere you look at the moment. You may have been with us yesterday to see the agony for the under-18s in the final minute. We know Team Tuchel have seen off Porto and now have Man City at Wembley tomorrow. And right now it is the start of what we hope will be another fruitful cup campaign for Emma Hayes and her all-conquering Blues with the London City Lionesses as the guests and very much the underdogs in the King's Meadow Evening Sunshine in what is a fourth round tie and in this competition that is the first tie for each of these clubs in this season's competition. There's been an international break recently in the women's game. Last outing prior to that was another thumping victory for the Blues. Came against Birmingham City early in the month. Sam Kerr, as usual, on the mark there. And again here after Penilla Harder hit the crossbar. Quickest to react. The Australian forward, who's already passed the 20-goal mark for the campaign in all competitions. And another there for 3-0. All that right tight up to half-time before Frank Kirby got on the score sheet after the restart to make it 4-0. Guru Wrighton tucking in number five. Chelsea absolutely relentless at the moment. And they have to be, given the situation in the league table. Kirby rounded it off with her second. And the Blues sixth. Everything turning to goals at the moment. Wins and wins galore. And it has to be that way, doesn't it, Sam Parkin? Who's with me? Former Blue Academy boy. And we've got some Academy youngsters coming through in the Chelsea team lineup, which I'll give you shortly. But whisper it quietly. It's not just Pep going for a quadruple, is it? Emma Hayes <laughs> is up for it this year, too. Yeah, really looking forward to the game. Um, I would imagine the fringe players that come in uh, will be really motivated tonight. And um, Emma Hayes has to shuffle the pack, really. You think about the congestion there has been with the, the Wolfsburg game, then the international break, the Birmingham game sandwiched in between there and the magnitude of the fixtures to come. It was obvious that we were going to get a glimpse of some of the stars of the future this evening. So really looking forward to that. Probably not yet the congestion in the women's game that there is in the, in the men's game, but she had to be sensible and, uh, and rest some tired legs, I would presume, today. Yes, a mixture of youth and experience, as you often see with the top clubs. In the earlier rounds, at least, of cup competition, still led out by Magda Eriksson there, but a much-changed side that she is in charge of here. Let's have a look at it. Great chance for plenty of rotation for Emma Hayes. Half a dozen regulars arrested for the youngsters. Georgia Fox and Aggie Beaver-Jones, this is a full debut. Great news for them, just their second appearance overall. Charlotte Wardlaw, another teenager, plays for just the second time too. And rare starts for the likes of Hannah Blundell and Jess Carter, Drew Spence and Carly Telford in goal. London City have a reasonable amount of experience. Lily Ag, both at home and abroad with plenty of miles under her belt. Look out for Atlanta Primus. She left Chelsea as a teenager just as the silverware began to flow. She's their top scorer in the championship. That is the division immediately below the WSL, incidentally, in which the Lionesses are in sixth place currently. So what an opportunity for three teenagers in this starting lineup, Sam, including Aggie Beaver Jones there. Georgia Fox too, and Wardlaw as well. It's a, such a tough side to get into. It's a tough bench to get onto. That's yeah. the thing. They're often not even on that would have been waiting for this opportunity. We got a glimpse of, of Beaver Jones and, and Fox at Aston Villa earlier in the season, just a, a couple of minutes cameo, but yeah, I'd be excited about the prospect of getting out there from the start tonight. And it's about the experienced players helping them through the game, the likes of Drew Spence, I suppose. Hannah Blundell comes into that category now. Of course, loopholes in the middle of the pitch, um, Carly Telford, and I'm sure they will talk the, the youngsters through the game and, and help with their experience. But, yeah, really exciting to see what they bring to the party. Experienced uh, at the international level as well, under-17s, a couple of them, so they won't be overawed by this.
Chelsea's first outing since the passing of the Duke of Edinburgh. Respects paid at King's Meadow. And now for the football. They've made the draw, incidentally, beyond this, the winner of this tie. And yes, we would expect it to be Chelsea, but you never know. We'll be at home to the winner of the tie that's being played between Everton and Durham. So it will be an immediate chance for a little bit of revenge in round five, potentially, with Chelsea against Everton. In case you're slightly confused by it all, the women have already, during the course of this season, lost a cup tie to Everton, but it was last season's FA Cup that was being finished off. That was the quarter-final. Everton went on to reach the final, which they lost to Manchester City, who it has been recently announced will be playing the slightly rearranged fixture with Chelsea in the middle of next week, as Sam alluded to. Huge matches coming up. I dare say there would have been plenty, Sam, rested for this game anyway, but... You've got a title decider there, two points apart with three games to play in the WSL and you've got those two legs against Bayern Munich following hot on the heels of it. So it's a no-brainer really for Emma to uh, to give a, a whole load of regulars a rest. That plenty of them aren't even on the bench. Berger, Bright, G, Harder, Kirby, Kurt, not involved at all. Just a huge few weeks for the for the, the team, isn't it? And, and for Emma Hayes and her staff considering the journey we, we have been talking about those Wolfsburg games the disappointment of past results to get them to, to get beyond them it just feels so momentous and then obviously with the prospect of Bayern Munich coming up as well this this could be an unbelievable end to the season and of course that game next Wednesday up in Manchester everything hinging on it really with just a couple of fixtures remaining in in the league once that one's out of the way so huge week could be a hell of a party Might have to clear some room for the extra silverware. But one game at a time and all that. And away we go. So much to enjoy about this season already from Chelsea's women's point of view. False start here. Everyone forgot about the knee. No winning four for the Lionesses. And so they have just had a pretty tough run of games, which they haven't scored in those four, incidentally. Their last game was against the champions elect Leicester, who you're going to see in the WSL almost certainly uh, next term. Hannah Blundell enjoying the chance to start. Early ball forward is a good one. Oh, and so's the cross. Just clipped the top of the bar there from Neve Charles. Yeah, it looks like um, Carter playing in the centre of the defence alongside Ericsson. Blundell found on the right-hand side. And a uh, good, decent delivery. Just didn't wrap her right foot around it when it came to the crucial moment, Charles. And goalkeeper thought that was well away and relieved to see it just clip the bar. Well, she's been a regular at right back since Marin Mielder's awful injury in the Conti Cup final. There's another six goal. Victory for the Blues against Bristol City. So one cup already in the bag. The WSL, well, it's on a knife edge, but they keep on winning and keep City just at bay for now. Neve Charles looks like she's playing right side of midfield here. We were wondering exactly about the formation because there's quite a few potential right backs in this team. Three or four who've played it during the course of the season. You know where Magda Eriksson's going to be on the left side of that central pairing. Ag coming in with the challenge. And Erin Cuthbert should be a, an important busy part of that midfield. Chelsea have the first corner of the game a couple of minutes in and looks like Erin Cuthbert's going to take it. Drew Spence lurking, Wardlaw two at the back of the D. It's right into the danger area. Yanez, the keeper, came and didn't quite get there, the American. Big slice, and it'll be another corner. Front foot start. 
as you'd expect from heavy favourites in this time. A little bit deeper this time. Part around the back will get there. Blundell with the cross. Plenty of defending for the Lionesses to do already. They sort of were Millwall, in case you're wondering. But like a Soviet state. Gained their independence a couple of years ago. Became a, a separate entity entirely from the Millwall Club. Hence the, uh, the newer name, London City Lionesses. Melanie Lupoltz has rested far less than most, actually. She was for a long time the only ever present in the WSL. And one of the more experienced players keeping her place tonight. Getting ready for a reunion with some of her former colleagues. Melanie Lupoltz in that upcoming Bayern semi-final. There's not much that Emma Hayes hasn't done yet. Uncharted territory and all that with Chelsea at least. And, well, a Champions League final is that. We've had some semi-final heartache twice over. Still don't know the other semi-final yet. It's Barcelona against someone, but the two big names from the French game are, are playing this weekend in the quarter-final second leg that got postponed because of uh, bad Covid numbers in France. They put everything back a bit there. Here is Lou Poltz. Big switch is on played to perfection Cuthbert Fox with the throw picked up here by Wardlaw two 17 year olds and an 18 year old in the side for the Blues tonight Doesn't half help having Drew Spence and I think Erin Cuthbert available on nights like tonight where they can pretty much play anywhere on the pitch. So Emma Hayes can fit them in, probably put the young players like Georgia Fox in their more natural positions. She's playing at left back. Drew Spence playing down the middle, it looks like, with um, Beaver Jones. Erin Cuthbert wide on the left-hand side, but as I said, those two more experienced players can pretty much play anyway. I think I've seen Drew Spence play at the back, midfield, sent forward. Uh, been a mainstay of this squad throughout all the success. Yeah, there's a few who've been here since the very beginning when the winning started and even before that. And they're playing tonight in terms of Hannah Blundell and Drew Spence. Beaver Jones putting the pressure on. Grace Neville is bailed out. That's a, a touch for Primus. In case you're wondering, yes. Daughter of Linvoy. Pompey legend. Here's Hannah Blundell. Now Neve Charles enjoying the chance to get further forward here. All about the quality of the pullback. And there were three or four in there. And Primus will get it away. A couple of players just snatching at that, but again, great run from Charles. See, identified Emma Hayes possibly in behind the fullbacks, one of those midfield players making darts in there. She's got in twice, nice little slid passes from Hannah Blundell. And unfortunate that no Chelsea player could connect with the finish. I think Aaron Cuthbert was the second of the guilty parties just taking a swing. This is the last 32 of the competition, incidentally. You've got nine qualifiers from some preliminary rounds, joining the 23 clubs from the top two divisions. Coming in at this point, as they would in round three in the men's game. These two were actually supposed to be earlier in the campaign in the other cup competition, which Chelsea went on to win. Didn't happen. 
again because of COVID kind of worked out it was COVID in the London City camp incidentally that put paid to the it was a group stage game but it was already guaranteed that London City could not get through and that Chelsea would so they decided essentially not to bother playing it which made entire sense really given the uh, schedule trying to cram it in at a later date when the group work was already done and dusted and as we know after some thrilling rounds Incredible game at City in the quarter-final that went to extra time. That smashed West Ham and then smashed Bristol City in the semi in the final. One shiny pot already claimed. Hopefully at least one, maybe two. And dare we dream it, three more to come. This is Wardlaw who played in a cup competition a year and a half ago. That's a serious youngster, but still only 18 started that game so this is her second appearance both of them starts Charlotte Wardlaw as I said earlier the squad's so strong that they don't often get the chance to be on the bench Sam and I were doing the game against Villa when Beaver Jones and Fox came on for their debuts here's Blundell with the cross Jess Carter Pleased to be getting some action here. Not seen much of her for one reason and another. Yeah. Chelsea years since signing for Birmingham. It's been difficult to get in. There's been a lot of injuries. But, uh, big start at Wolfsburg with the pressure on in the Champions League. She was excellent at right back in the centre half tonight. Here comes Ericsson up from the back. Little cut back to Cuthbert. Spence is waiting. Hayley Nolan in the way. Neatly done. Blundell, that's where the space is. Cuthbert, four waiting for it. It's awkward. Leave Charles trying to tuck him round the back. Almost went straight in, didn't it? Good play from Aaron Cuthbert. Lovely little dummy. Getting the space towards the byline. Charles just unable to wrap the right foot around it, but. Already started to feel a little bit sorry for Flo Fife, I think it is, who's leading the line for the Lionesses. They're dropping back into a 5-4-1 shape. She's midway in their own defensive half. But it's going to be a lot of unselfish running, I would suggest, and be interesting to see if they do carry any kind of threat on the counter-attack. It's going to be very deep. They're going to try and frustrate Chelsea, but obviously there's two sides to it. Have they got the the quality and the ability to hurt Chelsea going the other way. And attacking players like Primus and Fitzgerald having to try and get back and Primus doing exactly that there, but it's worked out well for Chelsea instead. Flag up. strength and depth that Chelsea have. A player like Aaron Cuthbert would start for almost any team every week in the women's game. And such is the quality in that Chelsea midfield that she doesn't always, in fact, more often than not, doesn't, but still gets plenty of game time, of course, and there's lots of competitions to play in. But when you've got G and Leupoltz, in front of you in that regard, or Penilla Harder just in front, well, that's tough. Charles, cut out by Short. Chelsea defeats few and far between. The only two during the course of this season. 
The shot won against Brighton, to which the reaction has been astonishingly good. And the Everton Cup game, I mentioned this competition, but from last season, albeit during this season. Blundell, it's deep. Is it too deep? Not everyone appealing. And I think an educated guess of goal kick there. Yeah? Good point that, Ben, isn't it? Because we, we did that Brighton game, didn't we? And you felt there might have been a little bit of a drop-off. Certainly would have been disappointing because they were on such a brilliant run at that stage, breaking all kinds of records. So it was a real sickener. I think they responded 10 wins in 11, all Correct. competitions, which is incredible. And the, draw, and the one that wasn't was the draw yeah. against At Atletico Madrid when the, the tie was won and they only scored right at the end. So it's not even a proper draw. <laughs> so, yes, 10 wins and that in the 11 games since. That's a lovely way of passing. Yanez had to get there. And in fairness to her, she did. That had problems and fouls and free kicks and maybe even a penalty written all over it when she started to come. But the new American keeper who's played every minute of their league season was out quickly enough. They did brilliantly. Front two linking up. Uh, Beaver Jones with lovely movement down the side. Got the toe to the ball as well. And you just think that's going to end in a collision. And possibly repercussions for the goalkeeper, but great timing on the spot to make the challenge. Can't get out at the moment. Spence. Mandel and Charles should have that nice little thing going on the right-hand side here in this game. Both of them able to beat right back, both of them able to go forward. Makes me immediately think of Babi Yara and Lasso doing the same thing. Stanford Bridge a generation ago. What a great ball and a wonderful volleyed cross in the direction of Aggie Beaver-Jones in the end. Fifteen minutes of pretty relentless Chelsea pressure. Not too many saves, though. Maybe now. Cuthbert scurrying in. Cut back towards Leupold. Another Chelsea corner. Getting into really good areas. The approach play is excellent. Aaron Cuthbert in particular, lovely and sharp over on the left-hand side. Maybe a little bit of lack of bodies in the box so far. Um, Drew Spence, I think, naturally will show a little bit to feet and maybe pull out around the 18-yard box and have to wait and see if Beaver Jones is a bit more predatory than that and can make the runs across people get into that six-yard box, but just been a little bit underrepresented in that in that area, first 15 minutes. Aaron Cuthbert with the corner. It's a good one. Eriksson nearly got the glancing touch on it. Shooting chance here. Oh, what a hit. What a goal it would have been. Thought Drew Spence was going to hit it. It seemed to be coming towards her. But in the end, it's an absolute rocket. What a goal it so nearly was for Hannah Blundell. What a shame. Keeper just watching that and praying, Sam. Yeah, it's, it's clean as a whistle, isn't it? I'm not even sure what it strikes. Is it the stanchion, I think, to the side of the, the goal? Yeah, I think it is. Brilliant strike. Very two-footed player, Blundell, and that's why her versatility is a great strength as well. Comfortable either side, I think. Either full-back position and just showcasing that there on maybe a weaker foot. She's got all the winners' medals in the collection domestically, Hannah Blundell. There you go, there's the right. Yes. Cuthbert with the layoff. Georgia Fox. Nearly dropped for Leupoltz. Fitzgerald back helping out. <laughs> There's that job for five there, you know. Yeah, you got... It's got to stick somehow. Well, hasn't it's, it? it's an impossible job, really, isn't it? You've got two, three Chelsea players snapping at your heels there. Probably had to pop it off first time and then make another angle, but it's a hell of a job because uh, quite often she's going to be the one who's holding the ball up and then having to make the the runs beyond Chelsea to try and get the second one. That'll be on my gravestone. Sam, hold the ball up. <laughs> Four by Primus. Being... Called upfield, but Jess Carter's under no pressure here as she brings it out from the back. Oh, 
We watched Jess Carter play in that Aston Villa game. Before that, she'd had 14 minutes worth of substitute action in a couple of WSL appearances. Really limited time. Charles with the cross right into the danger area. Just about doing enough to keep their sheet clean at the moment. London City Lionesses but they're under severe pressure. They'll be pleased they've got to 18 minutes. The last thing they could have done with was being a goal down to a heavy favourite inside two or three. Chelsea have really got that habit this term of scoring early goals in games, taking the pressure off. He's given straight back here, Blundell and Charles. Newpolt's lurking in the box with Beaver Jones. Blundell, Neve Charles. It's not quite desperate defending, it's maybe one off that, isn't it? I mean, Neve Charles's quality has been excellent at this stage of the game. I thought Anna Blundell had the opportunity just to come in field on her left side just a little bit before then. Once again, making good progress down either flank. It's a 5 5 naught, basically, for them at the moment. Latest Charles Cross. Or maybe you call it a 5 4 1. But there's the one closing down Ericsson. Chelsea's passing too slick. Jess Carter. Blundell again. Great chance now to pick out a teammate. Five of them in the middle. Stood up in there. That was a, a better delivery, wasn't it? Bit of variation in the supply. They've tried to cut balls back where Lionesses have a lot of bodies. They've been able to clear their lines, but that one stood up beautifully. Oh, and Drew Spence go and attack it. Certainly use that physicality, but well defended again. Well, the corner's found its way. Oh, it had to be in the ask if it's gone over the line. What a chance for Beaver Jones twice. The crossbar now struck. Well, it's unbelievable how it finds it. The ball all the way into the middle of the six-yard box. The header's missed at the near post, isn't it? That's how it ends up at Beaver Jones's feet. She can't believe she hasn't taken that. Oh, it's just bouncing up, isn't it? So It's the right thing to do yeah. to go for height, isn't it? it had to go the, in roof the roof is the place to hit it. Absolutely. It had to be taken quickly. Difficult on the bounce. If she'd have delayed it, potentially the goalkeeper would have came and smothered so I can understand why she tried to drill it high what a brilliant pass that is from Blundell it's 1-0 now Neve Charles tucks it in absolute class for all the patient build up we've seen that's one killer ball and one killer finish and there is that combination of Blundell and Charles. That's a brilliant goal. Yeah, and taking advantage of an opponent who's disorganised probably for the first time, because you look at the midfield line, and Charles has just done this from the first whistle, really, made really positive runs behind the back five, the back three, and found with just an amazing pass. And look at the finish as well, because there's not a lot to aim at. Bends it in, beautiful shape on the pass and on the finish. Quality goal. Rare chance to get further forward tonight for Neve Charles. Marked it with a goal already. Not a first of the campaign, though, even though she's normally further back than she is this evening. Scored a very big goal in the other cup competition, actually. And an absolute worldie it was, too. An equaliser to make it 2-2 with a minute to play in the Conti Cup quarter-final away at Man City before Sophie Ingle then scored an even better one during extra time. Chelsea went on to win 4-2. Here's Cuthbert. Leupold's are just quicker to every loose ball, every clearance comes that way and the rare respite comes. They get a quick breather, but not that quick. Well, too quick as it turned out, the quick free kick. They wouldn't even mind the break just to sort out their wall and have a have a breather. It's 
Ask it for Harley Bennett down. The captain who's played every minute of their championship season. Before this poor run they've been on, they were on quite a good one. Won three in a row in the second tier before this four-game winless streak. Up against it here for the first quarter of the time. Now facing a free kick that is within range. And uh, Yanez gathers that very easily from Aaron Cuthbert. You almost hope they do get up. There'll be even more space in behind. Goal of sublime quality has Chelsea in charge here. Might be a little pattern emerging, you know. 2015, 2018, League and Cup double every three years. Yes, please. Bennett in on the slide. Yeah, as impressive as um, Charles has been in the opening 24 minutes, Fox on the the left-hand side looked really composed, just um, keeping it really simple. Nice little passes into Aaron Cuthbert. Covers the ground excellently. Looks to be a really good athlete. Good uh, performance in this first half. Carter and Eriksson been on the halfway line at worst so far. Lupoltz to Ricky Beaver Jones. Well well Should be thinking about that chance still, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> at, at 17, or are you just, don't worry, I'll get more? Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, but confident in the knowledge that there should be more chances tonight. You know, if that's in a tight game, she's thrown in for a league encounter and that happens, that can play on your mind, but she'll be should be confident they'll come again. Just thinking now, I mean, they've been difficult to break down for, for 20 minutes, and the one time they get out of their shape, punished by, by Chelsea. And, and they're the occasions when you can play in transition and break quickly when they haven't got the bank of five and four. That's when you have to be at your best and move it quickly and have the quality, and Chelsea did it absolutely superbly to get that opening goal. This could have been a really frustrating 45 minutes or even first hour. Here's the goal scorer, Charles. Cut out by Bennett. And a free kick for the challenge on Prime. It's not going to get it. And now they are. A little tug, I think, on Lily Ag. It's, uh, in her second season with the Lionesses, missed the entirety of the first. Broke a leg as soon as she signed. But experienced player. Probably finding this a bit of a chastening experience. Former Brighton and a, a B and a gunner. Bristol City player and is in fact the first English player to go out and play in Germany with Frankfurt, who used to be the all-conquering side for a period out there. And Carly Telford gets a touch with the gloves. Not sure we're going to see that all too often tonight. Mind you, we thought that in the Brighton game we watched and then the wind blew and that corner went in and... Well, the reaction, as Sam said, has been amazing to that. Here comes Cuthbert on the charge. Too strong, too quick, but just not quite accurate enough, as it turned out. Fitzgerald back there, chased all the way. Yeah, can't live with Erin Cuthbert on the left-hand side. Brilliant play once more. Just the final ball's been lacking from her. A few times just um, <laughs> playing it into space where there's no blue shirt. But a uh, great play. Once more, but it'd be inter interesting if that shove would have come inside the 18-yard box that she got just after she turned the old afterburners on. Booby Jones made something of that. Ericsson. 
Blundell. Nicely popped round the corner by Lou Bolts, and here goes Neve Charles again. Running at Murphy and across to cover was Hannah Short. Half an hour with plenty of corner practice already for Erin Cuthbert. Good corner as well, right into the mix and into the back of the net. Jess Carter on the volley. It's two, two absolutely fabulous finishes here. Just not picked up at all. Carter really has to concentrate on the finish though. Outswinger from Erin Cuthbert, just into an area. It's 2v2 when the ball's in the air. I'm not sure how she gets free, but just admire the finish. Great contact, absolutely whizzes past the goalkeeper. The rare start and a rare goal, hell of a finish. It's over a year since she last scored, but she's not played that much, as I mentioned in the time in between. Sorry, Sam, you were saying? Just had a really composed start, and I was just thinking, you know, all the experienced players lining up against... Uh, along, alongside the, the less experienced players, if that makes sense. So Fox has got Ericsson alongside her. Um, and Cuthbert in front of her. Yeah, of course. And then you've got the centre forward, Beaver Jones, alongside Drew Spence. Ward Law playing alongside loopholes. The, the risk diminishes, doesn't it, when you stick them alongside people that have got countless games under their belt. And um, Good management. Yeah. It's not, as you say, it's not just the... The ones you bring in, it's, it's who you put them near, and that's just cleverly done by Emma Hayes, rather than having a maybe a young untried centre half with a young untried left back next to her or something like that, when you therefore could have a greater risk of a wobbly moment. Maggie Beaver Jones scored for England at youth level. Will hope to get 90 minutes. And we'll hope that there will be further chances to add here. The pressure is off even more now, even though she has missed a good chance to have gone in for others. Oh, that's a lovely touch. Drew Spence just clipped by Hannah Short. Chelsea just too good in too many areas here. Yeah, good position. Number 10 position. Drew Spence will do that, I think, throughout the piece tonight. Drop in to holes, be the link. Maybe Jones can play a little bit further up, try and stretch the game, and yeah, that, needs, that looks to have a nice balance about it. Cuthbert. And, uh, again, not quite got the radar right. necessarily expect to see a defensive side concede a volley there what seven or eight yards out but even so that's some technique to meet it as sweetly as that the goal before it was a thing of beauty too top level quality about the two goals that have Chelsea in charge of this round four tie a reminder if you missed it at the top of the show the winner of this tie plays the winner of Everton versus Durham in the last 16 Round five. The chance to launch something forward here. It's towards Ag. Fitzgerald will try and get there. Blundell made sure nothing happened. And that was a fleeting moment with the ball in Chelsea's box. I just have to stay concentrated throughout the, the game, especially when the score lines like this. You don't want to give any hope to the visitors. So far, a really professional job. Hearing a lot of up from Mel Phillips. I wonder if they dare. Keep it inside, Fred. Keep it inside. Keep it right now, 
risk and reward, isn't it, Sam? Might be too much space in behind, but if you drop too deep, Chelsea get to do this relentlessly. How far up there you push, I suppose. Just too much on the pass. Blundell galloping forward. Feel like she's been around forever. Still only 26, Hannah Blundell. Cuthbert and Primus in with the 50-50. Hang on the chase, it's Ericsson with the back header and Carly Telford. Just about got out there in time. For a minute, you wondered. Here's Charles. Good first touch. No one at the far post. Oh, nicely played again. Nice angle from Drew Spence. Good awareness, knows that position well. Flicking it around the corner for Charles to get another opportunity to deliver. But yeah, once more, not many runners in the box and wildly overhit. Here's Lou Poltz going for goal. Oh, what a goal! We have seen some finishing here tonight from the Blues. Melanie Lou Poltz with a big smile, and well, she might. That is some finish to go with two other beauties. Chelsea are cruising into round five here. It's 3 0, it's not even half time, and the goals are getting better and better. It's full on 30 yards, isn't it? And you know that when she's sizing it up, where she wants it to end up, cuts across the ball. Doesn't have to be fiercely struck because the direction and the, I suppose, the movement of the ball takes it into that far corner. It's a helpless dive, isn't it, in the end? Brilliant strike, wonderful technique. Pick of the bunch so far. Well, it's been quite a bunch. Most of her goals have come in the cup. It's not really what she's in the side for, in fairness to her. Very much a, an engine room midfielder, really. Which you need in there with G being creative and Penilla Harder in front of them more often than not, or Aaron Cuthbert, whoever it may be. And Lou Poltz is the sort of the glue in there. Chips in every now and then, and that was chipping in in some style. Yeah, just the way she strikes it there, it's always moving towards, towards that corner. Ten yards from the goal, the keeper's probably thinking, I've got a chance here of getting across there, but it's always moving towards that far corner. Beautiful strike. Lovely balance there from Fox. Dangerous cross as well. Oh, it's so nearly four. Blundell coming in. Trying to get in on the act and very nearly did. Yeah, spoken about her quality with both feet. And look at the way she controls that. That's not an easy skill at all. But it's exactly where she wants to put it in that far side netting. Very unlucky. Great technique. Just off the bounce like that, as you say. At any level of football, more often than not, that's going up. Skims the post. Chelsea hit the bar twice. Loved that drop of the shoulder from Georgia Fox that lost the defender completely. Just bought herself the room to clip that ball in. It's got a very powerful stride, I would say. Looks like a you know perfect build and, and skill set for a marauding fullback. Covers the ground really well. Use of the ball has been good so far. Must be close to getting a bit more game time. Who's in the way? Anderson, is it? Yeah, Jonna yeah. Anderson mostly on that not side. Bad, not bad. Skipper's down again, Harley Bennett here. And maybe treatment required by the looks of it. Doesn't look good, Drew Spence there. 
showing the Chelsea concern, although there'll now be an impromptu team talk for both coaches. I was following the ball, I missed what happened there, but uh, seven minutes to half time, and there's uh, genuine concern here for the Lionesses skipper, Harley Bennett. Otherwise, Emma Hayes will be very pleased with what she's been seeing here. Some real quality. Albeit against opposition from a tier below, but it has been a, a fabulous view. Some great goals and nearly some more great goals on top of that. Three off the woodwork, three in the back of the net. And still a half and a bit to go. Ankle is the apparent concern here for Harley Bennett. And she's up on her feet. Well, walking off unaided might make you think that perhaps she'll be okay to continue. Gives us a chance to have a look at the goals. Such a cute pass and an even cuter finish. Blundell to Charles there, a volley here, Jess Carter, technique of the highest order, and then this. I'm back to thinking the first one's my favourite now, Sam, actually. A wonder strike as that is from Lou Poltz. Yeah, the it's just the, the, the difficulty level of the pass and the finish and the, the weight on it and everything about it. Yeah. It was a lovely finish. All, all three immaculately taken. You think there's only really been the Beaver Jones chance that crashed off the the bar that I can I can think of. The finishing's been really clinical because not I mean they're half chances, aren't they? The first one's a, a decent opportunity. The other two, you don't expect them to go flying in the net. Looks like Bennett's going to come back on after that. She seemed quite stricken for a while there. Five minutes to half time is Carly Telford. It's largely been a watching brief for her. Well, into her second spell as a blue. Part of the furniture, really. Played a bit in the league campaign. Oh, and Katrin Berger tends to be the starting keeper. Not always, though. Most. What well, a season she's had. There's a new number one as well in. Sakeda Musovic, who's on the bench tonight, and Katrin Berger not involved. There's even serious competition for places. The goalkeeping department, where uh, next to Emily Orman, has uh, got a lot of traffic in front of her. Calmly done by Ericsson, immediately making the angle for the return pass. All things that are helpful to the 17-year-old left-back. Drew Spence, lovely way to pass. Chance here for Beaver Jones. Yanez makes the save and is thrilled that for once it's not a perfect finish that's flying past her into the back of her net. Maybe it'll be third time lucky for Aggie Beaver-Jones. Brilliant movement, though. As soon as the ball broke and Drew Spence got turned, she showed her intentions exactly where she wanted the ball by moving in between full-back and centre-half. Found wonderfully by Drew Spence and works the goalkeeper. That's um, you know, half the battle, especially on her weaker side, so nothing wrong with that attempt. movement good uh, you know identifying where the space was knowing her strengths not you know it's the tendency and the attempting things to show to feet there and uh, just uh, make the passers decision easy for him when you can see their number good movement a 
make it sound so simple when you say it like that. Offering them the channel to pass into, and Drew Spence did. And you would hope there will be further opportunity. Two minutes left in this first half, and it's a, a clean pair of hands there from Shea Yanez. I suppose it would be tempting, especially with a three-goal cushion for Emma Hayes to leave all the youngsters on. I mean, why not? Give them 90 minutes, although I dare say Bethany England's thinking, I fancy a bit of this as the number nine. I'll, I'll get on and have a goal or two, please. She is on the bench. No Kerr or Kirby or Harder involved tonight in terms of those attacking options for Chelsea. But Bethany England, I should think, champing at the bit to get on. We shall see. Anna Short will deliver a rare free kick here for the Lionesses. He'll be pleased for the break, I should think, in a minute. But can't waste them like that, though. Uh, I wonder how Flo Fife is feeling about that. This is not a game to be a centre forward for the Oppo in, is it? Let's be honest. Not so bad if you've got people running off you, but that's not really happened, has it? Apart from the odd set piece where she's had people in closer proximity with her. Good ball to find Neve Charles here. Ericsson. Lovely touch from Lupoltz, really clever. Charles with the cross. Really difficult header this time for... Haggy Beaver Jones, she's getting in the positions. If she'd scored that, that would have been impressive. Yeah, I think there's someone arriving maybe slightly better placed. Yeah. Nearly angles the header in towards the far corner. Wardlaw it was. Just maybe behind even Spence her. behind her, yeah. Mm. Into first half stoppage time, of which there will be two minutes. Confirmation there. She'd have loved the goal and hopefully we'll get a chance later in the game to score on Aggie Beaver-Jones. But first things first, she's been involved lots. It's, it's sort of not passed her by, which would be the first thing you'd hope is, I hope I see the ball, I hope I get some touches, I hope I'm not just sort of running around and but not being found and not being fed. Got involved plenty. And so too, Georgia Fox up from left back. Options on the right. Pundell looking for Neve Charles. And one way and another has found it. Murphy. Irish international clears to touch. And then Carly Telford making the angle for the pass. Not required on this occasion. Here's Lou Poltz. again Spence miscontrolled it don't think Emma could have asked for much more Sam no I don't think so uh, really professional great attitude some sublime finishing real clinical edge the first 20 minutes she might have been disappointed with some of the deliveries from wide but that's all I can say really the experienced players have led younger players have shown real quality and can only beat what's in front of you um, Tough task for the Lionesses, but you know, the other side experience as well. Coming up against some top quality opponents in their um, their journey to, to become a force in the women's game. Well, no shocks here by the looks of it in this uh, fourth round FA Cup tie. Chelsea in charge with three cracking goals. Jess Carter volleying in the second after Charles had calmly stroked home the first and a Lupoltz rocket for 3 0. Wrapping it up, and three times the woodwork has been struck too. Chelsea, even with the changes, and many of them, very impressive indeed. And heading for round five with 45 to play. The half-time score at Kings Meadow is Chelsea three. Lioness is nil. Now to a rather...
closer affair on this very field yesterday. It was Youth Cup time for Ed Brand and his under-18s and a, a heartbreaking tie it turned into in the end against Everton. Here are the best moments of that. And coming forward quickly here, Everton, as Chelsea try and sort themselves out. And that's McAllister with the shot. What a chance! Inside half a minute, Lewis Dobbin should have scored for Everton. It's only a corner. It could easily have been 1-0. And Ed Brown from the touchline is saying that's the wake-up call you need. They better be awake now. <laughs> Defended very well, Everton. They kept Man City out in the uh, last round and they've just pinched it here. Cannon off Bashir Humphreys, who's getting back in a hurry. Here's the substitute. Mills and then on for Whitaker. And McAllister scores. And that was avoidable. It's a good finish. Chelsea had the ball at the other end. Bashir Humphreys was caught on it, and the mistake has been punished. Mills with the pullback. And the blind side shot is a cute one. Miles Pert Harris. Chelsea so looking much stronger in this second half. This is Libramento. Oh, and it's Joe Haig here with a chance. Oh, that's a brilliant block. And soon up Bell! Christensen twice over. That is as good as a goal. Incredible defending. They both looked in. Such good work from Livramento. That's in the corner from Haig. Christensen in the way twice. Vale. Fear Bamer off the bench and straight into the action here, Brian Fear Bamer. Harvey Vale. Oh, that's a lovely ball! Right onto the head of Joe Haig, who nods Chelsea level, and that is entirely deserved for a brilliant second-half display, not least, I might add, from Harvey Vale, who's been excellent down this left-hand side. Begging to be headed home, and it was Joe Haig, 1-1. More than enough time for Chelsea to go on and pinch the victory here. All blue in the second half. Now, what will Everton's response be? They've not been in it at all. Well, they're in here, though, and there's no flag on Garcia! Who had to score? He's been on the field half a minute. Well, their response was that. From seeing their lead cancelled out, they're nearly back in front with one of their first attacks of the second half, and it's a great chance, one-on-one. -on -one. Garcia's missed it. Corner, into Vale. It's another free header that goes begging for Chelsea. He's not the first guilty party, Harvey Vale. He wasn't challenged, but it wasn't on target either. Webster, Vale outside him, he went the other way. Approaching the final minute, and Everton coming forward here. Rafael Garcia, it's stretched with extra time approaching. Going to drop here for McAllister. Oh, no! Lucas Bergstrom's let it slip through. And Everton have surely won the tie with seconds to go. It's absolutely devastating, and it's absolutely not deserved. It's 2-1 Everton. Horrible to see that again. Sorry, folks. Um, just an awful way for a, a good cup tie, as it was, to end. This one here, thankfully, doesn't look like Chelsea are going to be heartbroken at the end of it. And they really will be if it does turn around, because the lead is a handsome one. 3-0, and there have been chances for more. These are the best moments. And what a goal that would have been, but don't worry, great goals were coming. Hannah Blundell there, Sam Parkin. Yeah, she, she's been one that's led by a real example. Such a two-footed player and um, obviously involved in the, the first goal that's coming up. But that's just a brilliant strike on her weaker side. Defender and goalkeeper just watched and prayed. Aggie Beaver-Jones, one of three teenagers in Emma Hayes' starting lineup tonight. A full debut for her and a whisker away from marking it with a goal. Yeah, have you been critical a couple of times? The marking's been... 
Um, really poor. That's close to being over, actually. Might well have been, mightn't it? Yeah, it gets a fra I think it maybe catches a fraction of the line, but it's a decent effort considering it's bouncing up. And this is just a brilliant pass. Love that Charles had started to make those really forceful runs, you know, behind the opposition. You need that. You need people breaking beyond. And uh, it's a wonderful pass from Blundell. And I like the way she just kind of helps it on its way. The pass is bent, and then she just executes the same skill as well, really, to pass it into that near post, which was very clever. Yes, all along the same line, a little curler and a little curler, continuing it. Shortest distance between two points is a straightish line. Erin Cuthbert's corner there, met on the volley by Jess Carter for a first goal in a long time. And what a hit that was for 2-0. Yeah, just watching it back there, I think the... The markers of the two Chelsea players at the far post just get crossed over there. They lose their players. A little bit of confusion allows uh, to get free. And it's a brilliant finish, you have to say. Wonderful strike. Which was followed by another from rather further out. Melanie Leupoltz. How about that? 3-0. I mean, sometimes when you see balls whistling from 25, 30 yards, they've just tried to hit the target. You know she's cutting across the ball there to find that far corner. Sit in the commentary, the goalkeeper probably felt she had a chance when it was 10 yards away, kept veering away from her. Lovely bit of fade and into the side netting. And this was a great bit of acceleration, Georgia Fox. And then Blundell deserved the goal for her performance. She's hit the woodwork twice. That would have been another beauty. But three will do for now with the promise, you would think, of more to come in the second half. We certainly hope so while we wait for the players to come back out. Let's move on to another cup competition. The FA Cup for Thomas Tuchel and maybe his sternest test so far. It's Manchester City, of course, at Wembley tomorrow evening. This is what the German had to say ahead of that game at his press conference. We have the green light for, 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 for N'Golo because we had three days in between, which made now makes for him a huge difference. Matteo is unfortunately still out, but feeling already better, but still out, cannot be in the squad. And also Andreas Christensen is out, cannot be in the squad. So this is the, line, this is the situation. We are in a good moment. We had a, we had a setback in, in the home game with the red card and the loss against West Brom. We had an excellent uh, response. We had uh, two very good matches and, and two, two intensive matches and, and a big challenge against Porto. And, and we conceded a late goal for a loss. Okay, but if you need to lose, you want to lose. Uh, you want to lose a second a second leg one zero when you win the first one two zero. So um, this did not affect us. This is uh, important for him, I think, to show his full potential. Once he's in that zone, he's a key player, he's a huge player. And he had now big, big performances for us because he has a huge impact physically, but also from terms of quality, dribbling, runs and um, arriving in the box in crucial moments. He, he stepped up and um, this is what I know from him and I'm very, very happy about this in, 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 in the last weeks and in, in the last games. We have to admit that there is a gap, but for 90 minutes we, we are very self-aware and very self-confident that, that we believe, truly believe, that we can close the gap for one game. And this is the target for tomorrow. They want to have the ball, they want to have high ball possessions, high ball recoveries. We want, we want it as well. So we have to fight for these moments to make them suffer. We have to fight and be very, very we have to be on point and in precision and passing and positioning if we want to hurt them. There's a good moment now to play City and Pep. They are with Bayern Munich the benchmark in Europe for me personally. If, if we manage to beat them, it will be a huge boost. If uh, not, we will uh, have to accept and, and take it as a, as a challenge to grow and as an opportunity to grow. And uh, because we have some, some fights coming up, it's not, only about, uh, it's not only about FA Cup here, it's, it's about top four race and it is about uh, Champions League final. Do everything to be ready. This club here, Chelsea, is about to be ready. We have no promises to make to no players. We have no gifts to give. You have to fight hard. This is the moment in the season where you, in, in a club like this, um, you fight hard for your place. Once you're in the team, you fight hard to stay in the team. And, and uh, this is the life as a player from Chelsea. And this is big fun. Honestly, this is big fun. You have to embrace the situations like this. Even sometimes it's a bit harder for, for, for some of the players, but we try to 
to push them and we try to to convince them and influence them in in this positive way that uh, we we have a tight tight schedule and uh, we cannot drop one percent absolutely you have to embrace it it's silverware time and as usual chelsea football club in so many competitions sam i i just wonder on that whether it's any coincidence at all i think most people would say even fans of other clubs that Chelsea and Manchester City probably have the best squads in the Premier League, the deepest squads. And they're both still in the FA Cup. They're both still obviously going well in their respective aims in the league. They're both, they're the two left in Europe. Do you think there's anything in that in a, in a season where we've talked about the heavy schedule and, and there's been a record amount of injuries for other clubs, yet you've got a big fit squad at, at both of those two? Has to be, yeah has to be and then players that have maybe missed games early part of the season Chelsea are maybe fortunate that someone like Pulisic's running into form now same could be said about Manchester City maybe Aguero will still feature at some point this season so maybe the stars have aligned a little bit as well as having the quality in, in depth but I think you could probably you could probably see that across the board then if you go down the levels I know this is a very unique period that we're all living in and spectating in in terms of the football but I think across the the, the four English divisions the, the teams that can rotate the ma the managers having to box clever anyway but I think having the luxury of having like for like changes is probably prevailing yeah and the Hayes has got plenty of luxury on our own bench here a reminder in terms of that Manchester City game of course we will have the match day live team for you from well dotted all around the country including of course Wembley Stadium from 20 past four tomorrow it's a half five kickoff so they'll be on air and the team news will be following soon after that rotation thomas tuchel talking about there well, he's got plenty of options but he's had a fully fit squad for a while now and just a couple missing right now in christensen and kovacic as you heard there but so much to look forward to there and maybe it'll be a maybe it'll be a champions league final two we shall see they've also got to meet in the league before the season ends uh, up at the Etihad so that'll be interesting too and uh, it could be all sorts of things as we look at the Chelsea women here Sam we've got to play Man City next week two points apart with three league games to play Emma's mind will be on that as she considers what she might or might not do during the course of this second half I suppose from the bench yeah, the, the mind will already be partly thinking about what's to come. Of course, wants to navigate tonight's game. Wants the, the players that are potentially going to play a part in some of these huge games in the weeks ahead to be right at the top of their game right now. And that's all you can do as a player. She'll want, you know, Hannah Blundell needs to be a 9 out of 10 to give a manager a problem. Um, loopholes. Ericsson continuing it in the vein they've shown in that first half. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. And then some of the younger players may get some minutes in the, in the games that remain. But yeah, Emma will be thinking about a multitude of things, how she's going to set up training, uh, obviously how they're going to beat Manchester City to get the points, but what players need what amount of minutes from tonight, um, who will potentially be used in those games ahead. So. You're constantly juggling, but especially when you, you reach a period which is so congested and so important as the next couple of weeks. I'm always interested by the uh, the players maybe who have had a rest, but then are still given some minutes anyway. And you see different managers doing it in different ways. We are going to see Bethany England here for this second half, incidentally, and Jesse Fleming coming to join the party. You've seen plenty of both of them during the course of this season so there is your answer and I can't see Aggie Beaver Jones down there so maybe that opportunity has come and gone for her to open her account but don't worry there will be more opportunities I am sure um, as for the Lionesses well damage limitation I suppose Sam I mean that you know, realistically they are not going to win this cup tie but what they don't want is to get hammered but uh, Bethany England will fancy her chances of adding as uh, Wardlaw and Beaver Jones appear to be the two that have made way here. So Jesse Fleming will come into central midfield and uh, a number nine playing in the number nine spot.
straight swaps there. Sometimes there are certain players, I suppose, who actually would like a bit uh, rather than nothing at all, like Magda Eriksson tonight. I mean, and as a centre-half, obviously, she's not sprinting from box to box anyway, so this is a, a pretty gentle run-out for someone like her. But someone like Jonna Anderson, Sophie Ingall on the bench tonight, are they the kind that maybe wouldn't mind 20 minutes of action to keep them ticking over? Obviously... That's not going to knacker them out, so to speak. Of course, you could always have a 50-50 that does your ankle, and then you think, well, why did you bother giving him a game? But, well, that's the juggling job that Emma has to do, I suppose. Yeah, and I would have thought going into that half-time break that a good chance for the younger players in particular to play the full 90 minutes. So that kind of answers you, your question, Ben, from a few moments ago. Bethany England will be very much in Emma Hayes' thoughts for the, the games in the weeks ahead, and um, probably wants to keep her sharp keep her out there, maybe get a goal and keep her mentality really strong for what could be some big moments in the in the future games. Change up top at the break two for London City Lionesses with Annie Rossiter on for Flo Five, who I should think will be absolutely thrilled, frankly. <laughs> She's not having to yeah. do that anymore. I mean, she only had two or three balls into her. So difficult to keep possession. Um, because they, she didn't have anyone breaking beyond her, didn't have positive runners. Um, that's not where this has fallen away. Just weren't able to maintain their concentration, get tight enough from set pieces, I would say as well. That's why Chelsea have been able to run up um, quite a handsome lead. Lovely chest pass there from Bethany England. She is again. There's another player who would be starting for just about anybody, but... Find some players called Harder and Kirby and Kerr in her way. Is still plays most matches, just not always from the start. As uh, well, Georgia Fox nearly floated in a a good bad one, so to speak. Yeah, but carbon copy really, didn't we? In the first minute of the first half, Blundell from the right hand side, Fox just unable to wrap the left foot around it and uh, sails harmlessly wide. But had a really good 45 minutes and yeah, looks to be. Progressing really well. There's an interesting question of management there, isn't there? You've got your your youngster. You've got she'd have loved Aggie Beaver Jones to get on the school sheet, as well as the option of keeping her on. It's not going to cost him the game. She's also got a top quality, top level striker in Beth in England, who she'll probably feel Emma. I'm talking about that she'll owe her something in a way, and, and to to give her a chance to get some minutes and maybe some goals. Yeah, a lot of it would have been premeditated as well, Ben. The conversations would have gone on in the training ground and that's all you ask for as a player, really, isn't it? The honesty and a bit of openness, especially when you're an experienced campaigner. Lovely touch there from Spence. It's in towards Cuthbert. Not this time. Yeah, the last thing, you know, Bethany England would have wanted to sit on the bench tonight and be in the dark as to whether she's going to be used, but I'm sure the conversation was probably had, you know? get 45 minutes if we're in a commanding position go out there and keep yourself sharp get some shots away and hopefully get a couple of goals to take the confidence forward she's played almost all the WSL games but just a slight majority from the bench rather than the start had a, a lot of bad luck Bethany England in the the Champions League tie as well with uh, Atletico Madrid. You may recall Sophie Ingle was sent off right at the beginning, that first leg, and Emma had to make a sacrifice, and England, who'd started the game, came off. And in the second, you know, bang on the head, was concussed. Had to come off in that one as well. Just beaten to it there by Nolan. Nolan's pass there was a good one into Lily Ag, who was trying to help it on for Fitzgerald, but it's been read by Blundell, who's then lost it just as quickly. Combative. Charles trying to flip it for Drew Spence. Nice to see Drew Spence get in on the scoring act this evening.
Some beans in that pass from Magda Eriksson. Man City in midweek, Tottenham and Reading. That's the three league games. It's hard to look past Man City. I know we shouldn't, but really, draw that, then it ought to be enough for a, a retention of the title. It will feel like an even more precious one than last season's. I should think. Man City have got a fair bit of resentment about that. They were ahead of Chelsea in the table, but they played a game more, hadn't they? So Chelsea won it on a points per game basis. Here's England with a chance to cross. And Yanez pouring it away. Fleming. Another really tidy looking midfield player that in a, in a way deserves to get far more minutes than she does get Jesse Fleming Canadian but such is the quality the likes of her and Cuthbert have to wait for their chances foul on Magda Eriksson Chelsea free kick Ish line. Georgia Fox bending it in brilliantly towards Ericsson and then Bethany England coming round the back. Could not have put that ball in a better place, Sam. That's begging to be attacked. It should have been, yeah. It's almost. It takes people by surprise. Look at the position. Goalkeeper tiptoes towards it. Realizes that there's too much bend, too much quality on it. Bethany England, exactly the play you'd want arriving. Round at the far post, brilliant in the air, just can't get over it to direct it on the target. <laughs> Scored plenty this term, half a dozen in the league and three goals against Benfica over those two legs as well in Europe. Cup two, flag up here. Drew Spence it was who's just gone a bit early. Hopefully en route to retaining the title. Retained the Conti Cup. And hopefully. A good run in this competition too. beat Notts County in the final 1-0. G scoring the only goal of that one. 2018 beat Arsenal. Both of them were double years. Here's Cuthbert. Foul by Harley Bennett. from set-piece delivery tonight in Cuthbert, that's for sure. Into the right area, certainly. Back it comes. Possession stats will be... Uh, must be something like 85 15, I should think. Or maybe more. Here's Blundell. Get up, get up, get up. 
Carter. Not have had any more comfortable evenings than this. It's, it's hard for the teams from the lower levels, isn't it? You, you, you can't envisage there being too many shocks because there's, you know, real disparity, isn't there? There is. Between the quality of the, the, the top clubs, obviously, for obvious reasons, um, resources. But it'll be interesting in five years' time where the, the Lionesses can get to. Yes, um, gaps closing and all that. You imagine the whole landscape will look a little bit different. Probably be some... Probably be a bigger league for one. I'd imagine, imagine the WSL. Probably be more teams. I think you need that as well. With there potentially being um, you know, a bit more time to play around with a fixture schedule. It's congestion period right now, but there are moments of the season when there are spaces to get some more games in. I think everyone would be on board with that. Make it more competitive. It's at the moment one up and one down, isn't it? And, uh... Leicester are going to be coming up. I saw that. Into the top tier. and You know, you've got relatively newer sides, if you like, like Tottenham and Manchester United, who weren't really a factor even a couple of years ago. Here's Neve Charles. Oh, lovely. Into Spence and into the net for 4-0. Yeah, again, on a night when we're seeing some brilliant finishing, wonderful play from, from Charles, who's really... <laughs> Lit up this game on so many occasions. Lundell and, and Charles just been excellent. The combination play, great feet, and the cutback. Not sure if she picks Drew Spence out or she's just putting it into an area, but don't take anything away from the finish. Steered expertly from Drew Spence. From that position, has to be perfect, the contact, and she finds the far corner perfectly. I think that deserved a bit more of a celebration than that. I mean, I don't mean tearing around the pitch, screaming your head off and having a big bundle, but uh, she almost looked embarrassed. It's 4-0, and uh, Drew Spence, nice to see her on the score sheet. Remember a time a little while ago when she couldn't stop scoring. Fox back to the underemployed Telford. Yes, they had a, a thing you may recall, folks, called the Spring Series when they were in between changing the calendar of the women's game to a, a more autumn, winter, spring season. So they, they didn't want to have nothing in the in-between. So they had a, a short league campaign, in inverted commas, called the Spring Series, which Chelsea won, of course. And Drew Spence was just relentless. He scored in almost every game of it. And coming forward here is Hayley Nolan. Now Primus, Chelsea have some defending to do here. Cuthbert's got the better of Nolan. And that defending has been done well. Bethany England, brilliant. Drawing in the challenge of Bennett, but just overrunning it. She knew what she was trying to do there. Yeah, it would have been a chance on the counter-attack then as well with the Lionesses committing some bodies forward. Nolan's first pass, uh, really good into Primus. But when she got the return ball, just a little bit sloppy in possession. As you said, Ben, good spin from Bethany England, but a second touch, not good enough. Taking out a play. First goal of the season, that for Drew Spence. Got a handful of them last term. In League and Cup, here she is again. That's a nice one too. And has somehow squeezed the pass through to Lou Poltz. Here's Hannah Blundell. Charles, brilliantly done. It's funny seeing the combination with her and Blundell. They're essentially playing, and Jess Carter, because we've seen all of them play it right back this term for Maren Mielder's place. That nasty injury in the, in the League Cup final. At the moment, Charles has it. She's got that right back berth. Great turn from Cuthbert. And ricochet will not drop for Jesse Fleming. But it will be a corner. A good little spin. I think those three players you just spoke of there, Ben, just all really good technicians. I thought that they've all played really well tonight, really secure in possession, good passes. Yeah, I think Carter at centre-half 
She looks so effortless, really, for, throughout the game. I know she's not being put under too much pressure, but great. And it's not even her position either. No, I mean, she looks so composed in there. Deep cross. Lupot's fighting to try and win it back. Nolan gets it back to Yanez. Confident first touch from last player back, Georgia Fox. Looks like she might be playing centre half now. Have they switched it about, or is that just from the last corner with Jess Carter here suddenly on the left? Versatility everywhere you look. Let's see if she fills back in now. I think she probably will. Cut out again by Charles. Whatever level you're at, you want competition for places. Of course you do. It makes for a better team effort. Keeps your top players on their toes. It's no coincidence. That you see the fruits of that, whether it's here or indeed at first team level for Chelsea. You have, uh, I don't know, Thiago Silva getting injured, and in comes Andreas Christensen here. It's Marin Mielda, and in comes Neve Charles. Grab that opportunity. Half an hour to play. Half an hour before Chelsea are officially in round five of this season's FA Cup. Really nicely done. Fox and Charles and Spence and Charles again, who's suddenly on the left. I think we'll call that a slight slice. Yeah, I've had a few of those this evening. Charles just has had too much quality, really. The movement's been excellent as well, but the technical ability when she's got into wide positions, um, so secure with her, her passing as well, being able to pick out teammates at, at will. But yeah, just couldn't wrap the left foot around it on that occasion. Maybe she has just come over to this left hand side. I have to wait and see. Is there a cuff foot gone to the right? Yeah, maybe. Full back rotation and then zump. Fox. To Ericsson. I don't think she's going to play left back tonight, but you never know. Carter back in there now. Primus ready. Fleming didn't see her, maybe a peripheral vision. And then more confident, composed play on the ball from Jess Carter. It's a real superstar in the making. Very young regular at Birmingham before making the move to Chelsea. He's had several injury issues since then. And a very good side to try and break into. Nolan. That's neatly worked. Oh, that pass was on as well. Rossiter. Trying to bang it out wide first time. She might get the chance now instead. Feeding it forward for Lily Ag. And across on the cover is Jess Carter again. Fleming. Yeah, Charles, one of many who've had a brilliant game tonight. Should have really enjoyed it as well. Getting further forward right from the very beginning. Cuthbert with the cross there that's ricocheted behind for a corner. Yeah, it looks like Emma Hayes has just shuffled a few things around, really. Evan Cuthbert's gone on the right hand side. Charles, we saw a few moments ago down on this left hand side striking the post. 
Drew Spence has come a little bit deeper as well. Looks like her and Fleming kind of occupying to advance midfield roles. Bethany England up there alone now. Bit of a bundle, Fleming kept that in. Be another corner. It's Bethany England's had that one half chance, hasn't she? Sneaking around the back. So that's another thing that tonight presents. You know, the, some of these players are probably going to be, you know, maybe not starting the, the games that are on the horizon, but playing a part. This might be the shapes they end up in the game, so it gives her the opportunity to look at some different permutations. Spencer! Bang on target, and anywhere other than up the middle, I dare say, that would have been yet another fine Chelsea goal. It would have been five, pushed over by Yanez. Spectacular yeah. stuff. It yeah, makes her mind up the technique she's going for. No, she's going to side foot, but just doesn't open up her body enough to steer it towards the top right-hand corner. Too central and a, a comfortable-ish save, but good play. Another Cuthbert corner in towards Ericsson. And that awkward bouncing head around the back for Bethany England is about all she's had, actually. She probably would have thought it would have been a more open evening for her in this second half. It's Fitzgerald. Must be absolutely soul-destroying. You get on the ball for about two seconds and then it's gone again. The only other thing I think Emma would ask from this game is for no one to get hurt. Regular or otherwise. Blundell, Spence. Space she had there, though. Inevitable after a, an hour plus of chasing that the Lionesses will leave the odd gap now. Finding Fox, Nolan in the way. Hey. Hey. Bennett made sure she got the contact from Aaron Cuthbert. But, and the 50-50 as well to follow it, and here she comes. Nice idea, the pass to England. Corner. Strongly defended, in fairness. Deeper this time from Cuthbert towards Bethany England. Smashed up and out by Bennett. Good first time pass from Fox. Spence keeps it moving, Jess Carter popping up on the right side. That's a good cross into Bethany England. It's a header on target. Comfortable for Yanez. Great ball in, though. Yeah, a terrific effort, actually, because uh, difficult to know exactly where you're meeting the ball in terms of the goal. And she's just trying to direct it onto the target, hoping that it finds the near post, the corner, but goalkeeper's on hand, but uh, got good power in the header. You can see Drew Spence's position now a little bit deeper, even harder for the opposition to pick her up. Fleming bursting forward. And then Neve Charles just trying to slot it through for Bethany England there. She's sort of shown her cleverness tonight, Drew Spence. You know, doesn't run beyond really, balls into her, her feet, really secure in possession, plays one touch, two touch, and. She's shown her game understanding really well. I'm sure she's given the ball away probably a couple of times throughout the piece and, and now playing slightly more withdrawn. 
She'll uh, pick holes in the opposition. Flag is up here, I think, against Neve Charles. That'll be an offside and a, a rare breather for the Lionesses with just over 20 minutes to go. 32nd game this is for the Chelsea women in all competitions this term. It's going to be a 27th win. Three draws and just two defeats. It's an incredible season. Definitely three league games left. At least one FA Cup game left. And dare I say it, at least two Champions League games to come. The run-in. It's just big games every single time. As a result, it's where you want to be. It's where most clubs are not at this stage of a the season. There'll be plenty who maybe have one thing to play for or indeed nothing in, in some cases. So I suppose we get used to it at this club that even if, whether it's under 18 men, women, whatever, that there are title races, cup quarterfinals, cup semi-finals, Europe. It's getting used to being at that level where every three or four days you're playing what it feels like a must-win game. They are used to it. Drew Spence has been in and around that kind of level for a long time. It makes you feel sport in a way, though. Do you know what I mean? If you're at Crystal Palace or something, yeah, well, you're basically done. You're not going to get Europe. You're not going to go down. You, you know what I mean? You're not in a cup anymore. Yeah, but become used to it. I mean, this has been, I suppose, a somewhat disappointing season so what so far for the academy sides in, in that they're not going to be um, dining at the top table in terms of the Youth Cup given what happened yesterday and doesn't look like they're going to win the domestic leagues this year. And but Europe didn't happen Yeah, with that, with that being postponed so that's a real shame because there'll, there'll be a yeah. crop there that would have had UEFA Youth League to play and have been denied that opportunity UEFA deciding in case you missed that news earlier in the year folks that, that it was going to be a a last 64 knockout starting in the spring, but they even canned that in the end. Yeah, I think that, and that's give that gives the players uh, a different focus. I think you know they really enjoy that, and, and it gives them good, I suppose, good skills in terms of their development playing against continental teams, continental sides. So I think that's been invaluable for a number of the players who have made the, the transition into the first team. This doesn't look good. Yes, it doesn't, does it? And. Just saying a moment ago, the only thing to really hope for in the next 25 minutes or so, apart from more goals, would be that no one gets hurt and certainly none of the regulars. And there's uh, none more regular than Magda Eriksson. The change is going to be made. I'm sure that would have been precautionary anyway, but well, she's walking OK. But her reaction there in that face wasn't... Um, hmm. No. She's going to want to know very quickly. That is now going to be the take-home thing from this game, isn't it? Uh, potentially, apart from lots of things to enjoy. But we were talking about that, weren't we? Uh, yeah, I mean, she's, she's vastly experienced, so she's immediately taken herself out of the situation, but didn't look best pleased. She, she'll know the, not, of course, the severity, but she'll know if it's a, a cause for concern, I suppose. Well, just uh, wondering unaided, but I'm sure that'll be you absolutely. Even if she thinks I'm probably okay, that you, you'll just say no chance. You're off, and she's just heading down the tunnel now. I guess uh, we'll see who comes out. Maybe uh, maybe Sophie Ingall on shortly, but we'll we'll get to that in a minute. So Chelsea just with ten at the moment, with about 20 minutes or so to go. Is Jess Carter? Cuthbert's done well. But it's staying with her has done equally well though. We've seen nothing of a Atlanta Primus as an attacking force, the Lionesses top scorer. I'm sure she'd love to have scored against Chelsea. She was in her teens when she departed for California in 2016. Played two minutes in the WSL for Chelsea. There's a substitute for Ernie Aluko. Five years ago. Will indeed be Sophie Ingle shortly as uh, Cuthbert goes for glory and very nearly finds it. Well, it has been an evening of sensational finishing. That was pretty close to another, wasn't it?
Yeah, probably Erin Cuthbert's best moment, actually. I'm willing her to take the strike on. It was there. It was set for her. And it's a beautiful strike, actually. If she's a yard further out, that is nestling. Wonderful strike. Melanie Lopoltz will just remind her how to do it afterwards. Just need a bit more fade. Corner. Fifteen to play their first of the game. We're going to see the change first, though. Yes, uh, Lupolt's looking over to make sure. And Sophie Ingle slot straight in. Immediate concentration required for the third Chelsea change of the night. That's a good delivery and a decent chance coming in there. Bennett up from the back. Has her face in her hands, so the ball is not in the net, thankfully. Chelsea's clean sheet stays clean, but only just. Yeah, Carly Telford just blocked it, isn't she, by combination of Lioness player and a Chelsea teammate. She's scored there. Yeah, it's a really good chance. Middle of the goal, goalkeeper out of the picture. Best chance they've conjured by a mile. Spence taking up a good position. Bethany England finds her shot. Flag was up anyway, wouldn't have counted. Yeah, terrific build up. The first take from Drew Spence is great. Pushes it wide, involved in the build up again. And lovely position, Bethany England just gone a fraction early, but knows on the swivel she's going to strike that first time towards the far post. Well, what another of those who will probably. I say probably start against City is, is coming on for another who will also probably start against City. Honor Anderson for Neve Charles here. Don't want either of them injured. I don't want anyone injured, obviously, but um, in terms of starters for their Man City in the buying games, you, Honor Anderson pretty much a shoe in his left back. All being well. If there is an issue with Ericsson, see Millie Bright not involved tonight. And Sophie Ingle is it an ob the obvious option to go in there. Quality player in the centre of midfield or defence, Sophie Ingle. You wouldn't want Magda Ericsson to be missing for obvious reasons. Here's Connor Anderson. from England into Lou Poults and now Jess Carter. Anderson. Cup runner in 2018, Yona Anderson, having come the year before. 2017 was a very busy year of quality recruitment for Chelsea at this level. Anderson here, one of Several who are still with the club. Some pretty good players who came then and have since departed too. Dan and Backman and Cooper and Torres Dottier, but Jonna Anderson, Magda Eriksson, Aaron Cuthbert, Maren Mielda all came 2017. It's actually Lou Poltz who's dropped into the to the back four. It has, yes. Yeah. Good spot. There she is. How many people have played different positions tonight? Quite a few. Ingle more than comfortable, as I mentioned, in central midfield. Bethany England here with Fleming in the middle, and Spence sits five, and she's got two of them. Two super first-time right foot finishes. Drew Spence is on a hat-trick. Yeah, arriving late, spoken about. The, the, the variety in positions that a number of the players have played. Drew Spence, look where she starts her run, now playing as a, a number eight, essentially, but makes up the distance and it's slightly further out than the previous finish, but it's almost a carbon copy. Cut back from that right-hand side and just guided. Knows exactly where she is in the 18-yard box and finds the far corner perfectly. 
That's the cutback you want when you are that number eight type arriving. Bethany England on a plate there. Beautifully done. And having scored her first goal of the season a little while ago, it's now two this term for Drew Spence. You can see the positions there. They're almost playing two number tens, really, aren't they? Her and Fleming, really close to Bethany England. So across there, Spence has got the armband on, incidentally, in the absence now of Magda Eriksson. We shall uh, bring you news of that on the fifth stand-up as soon as we have any. It's one of those you just don't know from the look of it, Sam. Hopefully that's precaution. We saw Maren Mielder injured in the cup final. You knew that was awful. It was only ever going to be out for either a long time or a very long time. Into the final ten. Cheeky challenge on Bethany England, who's up quickly. Actually defended better in the second half, I would say. Stop Chelsea from, from racking up loads of shots. You know, quite a lot of it's been from distance. I suppose a Bethany England goal would, would really cap the night now. That's what they'll be looking for. Well, she certainly will be a striker coming on, playing 45 minutes. She'll want to get her name on the score sheet. So would Cuthbert. He's never going to pull out of that. Oh, and England was nearly in there. Sniffing around. A great night for Georgia Fox here. Looks like she'll get the 90 into all being well. Three teenagers given a start. But she's going to finish it too. Lupoltz has put it out. That earlier collision in the uh, Lioness's box has left Bennett down again. Lots to enjoy about the Georgia Fox performance. And uh, let's have a little recap while we... Wait for the treatment to the Lionesses skipper of the goals. Just quality, all of them in, in very different ways. Yeah, that was just a brilliant pass. Great finish. The, the run not matched, really. That, that's just all about technique once Carter gets to the ball. This just exudes quality, really. Knows exactly where it's going off the right peg. And two very similar finishes for, for Drew Spence. This one probably slightly difficult because it's behind her. It's on the volley. This one is just guided, makes the, the, her mind up, I'd say, before she arrives that it's going to go there. It's just about the technique from then on in. And, uh, yeah, I think Cap's a good night for Drew Spence. Enjoyed her performance. It's uh, one that's been needed tonight, just a bit of a link player, a link in the midfield and the attack, and done it excellently, gets her reward with a brace. Bennett off to come on again, it would appear. Eight minutes plus stoppage time. Never quite understand why in these situations they bother with the stoppage time. It's not like goal difference makes any difference to anybody in a cup competition. No one needs the extra, but this being an English officialdom, I'm sure we'll get it. Jonna Anderson has given herself a, a tough one there to keep it in, but she did keep it in and it's been put behind. No, it got out anyway. It had. <laughs> Two jump, neither made it. Here's Fleming. Lovely way to pass Bethany England, and Yanyes did really well to get a piece of that. At least I think she did. Looked like it. Yeah, the, it just ran away from Bethany England. I'm thinking when she's making the movement and the pass is played, can she finish first time left-footed? Get a better idea now. Maybe not quite. Just ran away, and the, the, the defender and the goalkeeper converged at a similar moment, but sometimes it's a bit of a... Illusion, isn't it? You think they're going to get there? Well, you're right. If, if that left foot clip had been played, I think probably would have been smothered by the sliding defender and or keeper. But yeah, just at the moment, it, the pass left the boot. She looked in. Who would get the penalty should there be one? Well, Spencer's got the armband and she's on a hat-trick. Yeah, maybe the armband would tip it. I think... Uh, 
I think I'd be pulling rank there, wouldn't you? Um, yeah, yeah, probably. Beth in the England say, I'm the centre forward, I won it. Spencer going, yep. But, you know, <laughs> even more, <laughs> even more on, interesting if it would be Beth in England who got brought down, then that, that would be conundrum. It's not half a chance that. I thought we might see some action for Carly Telford momentarily, but it's been a very, very quiet evening for her, the substitute Annie Rossiter with the effort. There haven't been too many of them. Oh, good strike. Not too far away at all. They'd love to get a goal, I'm sure. Um, you know, despite the heavy defeat, I'm sure they have enjoyed coming up against the calibre of players that they have done, as I touched on at the end of the first half. But love a goal to show for their efforts. And closing in on five games without one. They are sixth in the championship table. They've won a decent amount of games this term. Pretty mixed bag. But this not really a yardstick of where they are as such, but certainly something to aspire to. So I mentioned the greater disparity between the divisions, of course, in, a, in what is essentially a younger game. That is always going to be the case. Just as we've seen in Europe with Chelsea's first forays into the Champions League and being shown a different level by the Wolfsburg sides of five and six years ago. And now look, that's how it happens. The gaps close. I'm sure four or five years from now, there will be less between Chelsea and clubs like London City Lionesses than there are now. Throw and with the cross that nearly squeezed through for Lucy Fitzgerald. A little bit more defending to do in this half. It's not saying a great deal in comparison to the first half. Melanie Lopoltz just getting away with that. It's off Fitzgerald. Chelsea ball. Job done. Ideally, might not have given Melanie Lopoltz 90 minutes here, Emma, I'd suggest, but we may find that out afterwards. Ingle. Cuthbert. Behind by Priest. I thought the ball was just going to be laid into now there. A lot of unselfish running down the right-hand side at this stage of the game. Cuthbert took it on herself and tried to dink it into the six-yard box, but yet another corner must have racked them up this evening. Run out of counters on the abacus. A couple of minutes to go. 6-0 last time out. Been a few six goal hauls this term for the Blues. Well, that was awkward, wasn't it? The near post, and Yanyas was close to colliding with it as she came and had to smother something. So five times the woodwork's been hit. I think about three of them have been fortuitous crosses, but Blundell first half uh, as well. Beaver that, Jones. Yeah, Beaver well. Jones smashed the crossbar, yeah. Except for the post from Hannah as well. That, that would have been a beautiful goal, that. Lundell effort on the left, just off the bounce there. Well won, Jesse Fleming, Spence. He got it to Anderson, who now gets it back from Fox. Neville in with the challenge. Neville at fullback. Carter. Turned out into a useful ball. I doubt she meant it on the bounce for Bethany England. Ingle now keeps it moving. 
So Bingle gets it back. Cuthbert hungry to still win it back, even in the final minute. Then Spence, then Fleming, then England. This is lovely. Drew Spence. That really would have put the uh, cherry on the cake. Yeah, that was a, a chance. Not the same quality on the left foot that we've seen for the two goals on the right. Tries to do the right thing, just bending it towards the far post. But that conviction a little bit in that strike. And that was a moment, you would think. Gone. Well, no scuffy tap-ins tonight. We've seen five goals of high quality and four or five more that have been a whisker away from belonging in that category too. It's not a flattering scoreline. Two added minutes, there you go. Not flattering to Chelsea anyway. Cuthbert, brilliant. Tenacious and energetic to the last, Aaron Cuthbert. Oh, fantastic. England. Well, she's had a couple of half chances since coming on Bethany England. Yeah, Ali Murphy turned inside out, but stuck to her task really well up against Cuff. But this stage of the game, an awful lot of defending. That last little bit's brilliant. Yeah, and just a little coming together at the near post. I think maybe Bennett and uh, Bethany England coming together, unable to force it towards the target. One last corner, maybe one last goal. Ingle. Cuthbert again, a little bit deeper this time, that's England. <laughs> it's Jess Carter just trying to flick out something, the ball was behind her. Spence. Half a minute to go. Ingle. There's been no sense of stepping off the gas at all, has there, in this second half, Sam? No. I, th I think the players coming on help that, though, just when maybe the standards are, are, drip, are dropping a little bit or the fitness levels are, are being stretched just to freshen things up as well. Get that little bit of impetus from the substitutes, certainly Fleming and definitely England were motivated from the from the off when they started the second period and yeah a good night all round apart from obviously the potential injury to Ericsson. Yes, we'll wait on news of that. Hopefully that's nothing. Otherwise, as expected, a dominant performance here from Chelsea. Some really fine football though and some absolutely smashing goals to enjoy. Two of them, numbers four and five from Drew Spence after Charles and Lupoltz and Carter had all shown real class with their goals. And uh, yet more confidence for these Blues ahead of some huge games in other competitions. Job done. Quadruple hopes very much alive. There will be a round five tie in the FA Cup to come. Chelsea with the Blues crews to get there. Five nil winners over the London City Lionesses this evening at Kings Meadow. Let's have a quick recap of the goals in case coming in late this evening on the fifth stand. Blundell to Charles. This was a beauty, the first of five good ones. Yeah, brilliant run, actually. Just watching it again there. It's the diagonal run. Really positive movement. Wonderfully fine, found by Blundell, who had a really good night as well, I felt. Can play you know, a variety of positions, but right back tonight, her and Charles's relationship from the off was was first class looking for each other and what a cultured finish really classy Jess Carter scored for well over a year one of a billion Aaron Cuthbert corners was met by that fine technical volley there's a lovely bit of space there that she just arrives into Ericsson uh, takes a couple of defenders with her there's a big space there but Carter peels off lovely and controls the volley in real style before the half was out, Melanie Lupoltz made it three with stunning effort. That's a 
31 yards, I make it, with a lovely bit of fade on it. Yeah, goal of the game, definitely. Wonderful technique, and it's because it's not a fluke. You've seen her do that before. Great technique, cutting across the ball, arrow-like into that far corner. Goalkeeper knows, I think, when she's in flight, that's fine in the top corner. And then Drew Spence with her first goal and indeed her second shortly after of the season, both from cutbacks on the right side. Neve Charles doing really well there and then Bethany England doing something similar a moment later. Yeah, really clever, clever finishes, good positioning. As she provided all night, I thought it was a really clever performance in a, a couple of different positions. That one's a difficult skill. Got to get the pace on the ball, got to get the direction. And this one, if you see the position she's in, very deep, makes the box and lovely execution. That's not easy when it's coming across you like that. Steers it perfectly beyond the goalkeeper into the far side once more. Nicely done. There could have been more too. A couple of good saves in the woodwork. Hit a few times, but very much job done for Emma Hayes. We'll go and check on her club skipper, I'm sure now. As she prepares for tougher tests, it's fair to say, than the London City Lionesses. A reminder that we have Match Day Live for you coming from Wembley on the fifth stand. Tomorrow from 20 past four, ahead of the half-five kickoff in the FA Cup semi-final. Do not miss that. Lots to enjoy there as Chelsea and Manchester City seemingly find themselves on a collision course in every competition available these days. But it's high time certainly for the Chelsea women, top of the WSL with City to come in the Champions League semi-finals. The last 16 has uh, been negotiated now too, having already won the Conti Cup. Round five of the FA Cup is to come from Sam Park in a night. It's good night.